Hello to you friends. This is what Buddha said, serious. But first, the daily, early Buddhist contemplation. Worthy, honorable, and perfectly self-enlightened was the blessed Buddha. Consummated in knowledge and behavior. Totally transcended. Expert in all dimensions. Knower of all worlds. Unsurpassable trainer of those who can be tamed. Both teacher and guide of gods as well as of humans. Blessed. Exalted. Awakened and perfectly self-enlightened was the blessed Buddha. Perfectly formulated is this Buddha Dhamma, visible right here and now, immediately effective, timeless, inviting each and every one to come and see for themselves. Inspect examine and verify, leading each and every one through progress towards perfection, directly observable, experienceable and realizable by each intelligence. Perfectly training is this noble Sangha community of the Buddha's noble disciples. They are training the right way, the true way, the good way, the direct way. Therefore, to these eight kind of individuals, these four noble pairs, Deserve both gifts, self-sacrifice, offerings, hospitality, and reverential salutation with joint palms. Since this noble Sangha community of the Buddhist noble disciples is an unsurpassable and in, indeed forever unsurpassed field of merit in this world, for this world, to honor, respect, support, uphold, and protect. Thank you. Hello to you, friends. This is what Buddha said, serious. Number two, from the Ankutara Nikaya, the numerical discourses of the Buddha, but first the nominator. Namo, Tasso, Bhagavato, Arahato, Sama Sambuddhasa. Worthy, honorable, and perfectly self enlightened was the blessed Buddha. The Ankutara Nikaya, numerical discourses of the Buddha, is a text of this size, you see it here. It's a text collection where there's a book of ones, book of twos, book of threes, up to book of elevens, where all listed items, list of ones, twos, and threes items, up to eleven items, are mentioned, that the Buddha spoke of in his 40-year-long career. And this is the first uh, sutta, of the Book of Wands, and it's called Form, Rupa, and it's under text, The Obsessed Mind, Chitta Pariyadana. This have I heard. On this occasion, the Blessed One was living near Savatthi in Jeta's Park, staying in Anathapindika's monastery. There indeed the Exalted One called upon the Bhikkhus. Bhikkhus! Venerable Sir, answered the Bhikkhus. The Blessed One then 
explained this. Because I see no other single form that even so keeps captivating a man's mind as a form of a woman. The male mind, because, remains obsessed with the female form. Because I perceive no other single sound that even so remains entrancing a man's mind as the sound of a woman. The male mind, because, remains overwhelmed by the female voice. Because I know of no other single smell that even so perceives tempting a man's mind as the fragrance of a woman. The male mind, because, remains enslaved by the female scent. Because I cannot think of any other single taste that even so continues to entice a man's mind as the flavor of a woman. The main mind, because, remains ensnared by the female savior. Because I cannot comprehend any other single touch as the touch of a woman that even so keeps overpowering a man's mind. This soft touch of a woman remains addicting the male mind to this female sensation. Because I see no other single form that even so keeps captivating a woman's man as a form of a man. The female mind, because, remains obsessed with the male form. Because I perceive no other single sound that even so remains entrancing a woman's mind as a sound of a man. The female mind, because, remains dominated by the male voice. Because I know of no other single smell that even so perceives tempting a woman's mind as the fragrance of a man. The female mind, because, remains enslaved by the male scent. Because I cannot think of any other single taste that even so continues to entice a woman's mind as the flavor of a man. The female mind, because, remains ensnared by the male savor. Because I cannot comprehend any other single touch that even so keeps overpowering a woman's mind as the touch of a man. The female mind, because, remains addicted to the male sensation. So here the Buddha explains that this gender-specific uh, sense desire, Kamachanda, Overpowers both the man and uh, the woman because they they cannot resist having desire for this opposite sex. So uh, this uh, the effects of this of this overpowering uh, of gender specific kind male with female and vice versa. This can be seen all over the place in uh, advertisement and uh, wear clothes uh, and so on uh, and in the movies and everywhere this desire uh, for the sexual object uh, the opposite gender is is seen can be seen all over society this sense desire karma chanda the buddha he likened to uh, muddy water, which has been uh, uh, tainted by putting in various kinds of colors. So it's a very colorful water. But if you look down into it and try to see your own face and use the surface of the water as a mirror, then you cannot see it as it really is. Because of this colorful uh, pollution of the water. So one cannot realize or recognize reality as it really is on the influence of sense desire, karma chanta. Since one can only notice and pay attention to the attractive aspects 
of this object. One cannot see the disgusting aspects of the object. One can only see the surface of the skin. One cannot see the excrement in the intestines or the slime of the blood inside the body or the skeleton inside the body of the given sexual object, whether male or female. So, right at this moment, because of only seeing the attractive aspects, this desire, this greed arise. And this causes neglect, blindness, delusion, momentarily. So at that very moment of seeing the attractive form and being captivated by the attractive form, one cannot see the Four Noble Truth. One cannot see that this captivating form and everything else is suffering and only suffering. One cannot see that craving for this captivating object is the cause of suffering. This one cannot see at that particular moment where one is fascinated, captivated, ensnared, obsessed, enslaved by the sensation of this object, whether seeing it, tasting it, hearing it, touching it, or thinking about it, fantasizing about it. For example, like uh, doing erotic fantasies, erotic dreaming. One cannot see that absence of craving, absence of urge, absence of desire, wanting, hoping, longing for this particular captivating object is the end of suffering. One cannot see that at that particular moment. And one cannot neither see the fourth noble truth, the way to end suffering, the noble eightfold way. One cannot see when ensnared, obsessed, captivated by these male, female, gender-specific sexual objects. So, this seeing only the attractive aspects of things makes greed arise and delusion, ignorance arise, ignorance of the Four Noble Truths. And because greed is a form of craving, then it also makes suffering arise. Because suffering is caused by craving. And nothing else than craving. So, uh, this gender-specific craving, sexual craving, for the opposite sex, is kind of like built into existing itself. Because this is the way we propagate. Huh? We are born this way uh, by sexual union of the father and mother. So it's in our genes, it's in our biology. It is something that is connected with having a body. This is having sexual craving. So this entails, ultimately speaking, then one, if one wants to uh, get rid of uh, suffering, then one has to get rid of sexual craving, then one has to get rid of a body. Because the body has a hypophysis and uh, hormones like testosterone and estrogen and so on. So it's hardwired biologically into the body that one should seek uh, the opposite sex for mating and for propagating uh, the species and having children and so on. So it's a, it's a very deep craving and very difficult uh, to eradicate. But as the Buddha said, it is possible. And it's possible by the way one sees uh, disgusting aspects, asupa nimitta, the disgusting signs in the body. By training it, both on the pillow and going around, one sees the skeletons and the organs, visualize them, both in one's own body and in other people's body. And when one sees the disgusting aspects, the repulsive aspects, the asupanimitas, in any kind of body, internal own or external others, of whatever kind, then this desire goes down. It doesn't arise. When the desire doesn't arise, then the delusion, the obsession of the mind with this form, it doesn't arise. So one stay within the Four Noble Truth, being aware of the Four Noble Truth, in this moment and in any future moment. Then one stays on the path, one approaches Nibbana, and one doesn't suffer. <laughs> 
from longing, and needing, urging, wanting, hoping for, planning to have contact with these uh, captivating sexual objects. Thank you for your attention. And this was the first sutta of the Anguntara Nikaya, the numerical discourses of the Buddha that you see here. It's called Form of the Obsessed Mind. Thank you for your attention. You heard Bhikkhu Samaita from the Cyprus Hermitage on the Knuckles Mountain, Pamparella, Central Hill Country, Sri Lanka. Please subscribe to the Google group Buddha Direct and visit the website whatbuddhasit.net. May all beings become thus happy thereby. Thank you. Namo Tasso Bhagavato Arahat. Sama Sambuddhasa Worthy, honorable, and perfectly self-enlightened was the blessed Buddha. As the next Buddha, the noble Arya Ajitta Mateya will say, You can come as you like, but you pay as you go. Thank you for your contribution and have a nice day.